Hey there folks, Rel here, and this is your Araxium update for Father's Day, June 19, 2016. We'll go over some community news, talk about upcoming additions to the game, as well as have a bunch of linky linky bits in the video description for you, so be sure to check those out. Now the first piece of news is that Planetside 1 is shutting down. The servers are going offline, the lights are being flipped off, or whatever needs to happen to sunset a game that's about 13 years old, and the shutdown date will be July 1st, so pretty soon here. If you haven't had a chance to play Planetside 1, the game is free to play and the community is uh, hosting a couple of events that are taking place to get is to get a bunch of people to check it out, you know, before it goes offline and also to potentially grab more data that's needed by the developers of PS Forever. And there are a group of individuals who are trying to make an emulator for Planetside 1 and kind of preserve its legacy. I wouldn't say that it has the uh, the blessing of the company, but RadarX did mention that it's unlikely that anyone would go after them so long as they aren't just, you know, making money off of the finished product. If you want to partake in Planetside 1 events, the PS Forever team is hosting them a couple of times through June 24 to June 26, and I've linked a post with much more detailed information, so if you have any interest in playing the original game, the flagship of the genre, and what ultimately made Planetside 2 a possibility, Go read the post and download the game. As far as the PS4 version of Planetside 2 goes, an update came out somewhat recently that added a revamped Indar to the PS4 version, as well as the Gorgon and Faction Continent Balance cues. Construction stuff is still in testing to make sure it doesn't blow up your console, so not a whole lot of new information there. The public test server has been updated with a bunch of changes, and if you don't know how to get onto the PTS, I've left a link for you in the video description as well. Rocklet Rifle did receive some changes, namely that the weapon now uses two separate ammo pools for each ammo type, so AP gets its own ammo pool, then Flak gets its own ammo pool. But this is, uh, this is more of a recent thing, and it may not stay like this, we're actually trying to solve some problems. And currently, you hold down the right click to enable your alternate fire, which will also show your alternate uh, ammo pool. And then you press left click to fire. So basically like aiming down sides of the weapon, but instead of zooming, you're switching ammo types. Now currently on PTS, you do need to hold down right click and then press your reload key to actually reload your second magazine. There's a code task in right now that'll hopefully allow us to, uh, to reload both ammo pools with uh, just one button press. And I could go into this more, but uh, if you watch my daily vlogs on Facebook, we have already covered this in length. And uh, if you're interested in the link to the Facebook page, it'll be in the video description as well. Air to air changes are mainly complete, except for the air hammer, which you know feels like a sweaty nut sack right now. And the reason for it is uh, actually because some of the values that are being messaged in the UI, like uh, air hammer is supposed to have 2.5 splash radius, that's not actually what's being used in the game because the client side data is wrong. So you have these super small AOE impacts on each pellet, and even though it looks like they've been buffed out a lot, and it's actually, the buff was too much. It was way too much, uh, and I got to play with it internally, so that's gonna be reeled back in. But uh, yeah, even though it looks like it's been buffed on the UI, what it's doing is actually creating, uh, it's creating a big feeling of con inconsistency because you have these super small AOE impacts on each pellet, and that's not what it's intended to do. So that's going to get another iteration. Uh, Mosquito and PPA are basically where they need to be, but there was some mismatches in the client side data there as well. The Red Daughter, which is our UI guy and an outstanding individual in general, also made some changes that allow vehicle gunners and vehicle pilots to use different sensitivities, which is uh, it's something that a lot of people have been requesting for a while, so it's good to get that quality of life stuff out. And I know that he's working on other quality of life stuff that's so going to benefit new players and veterans alike. Really cool changes coming up. The last thing that I want to talk about are the pistol optics which are now on PTS. I was trying to keep this a secret because it was a little pet project of mine but now the secret's out and uh, yeah so all Empire specific pistols all have uh, they have eight optics to choose from four 1x reflexes four 2x reflexes and it was 144 optics added in total which you include the Araxium and gold plated variants. Extremely tedious work, but more than worth it in my opinion. There are some annoyances though when it comes to visual recoil, but the Commissioner and Underboss and Blackhand all have that as well. Does not actually affect your aim so long as your crosshair is where it needs to be. Functionally, it's a huge improvement that we as players have been wanting for a long, long time. So I get all kind of, you know, warm and fuzzy just thinking about it and actually getting it into the game now.
As a teaser of things to come, Burness showed off some new construction objects on his channel, uh, and that includes lumifier walls, it includes ramps to do sweet stunts off of, infantry towers, and there's at least one new module coming as well. Also in the works, though there is no ETA, is the ion turret, which is going to lob slow moving ion explosives that are mainly meant to disrupt enemy sky walls. And, and, vehicle hacking is also being worked on. And I think there's some good progress being made on it, especially now that uh, Kevmo is back on the team. And for those of you who don't know, Kevmo, he was talked about as being the vehicle guy a lot uh, back in the day, and then the transition happened from SOE to Daybreak, and we lost him. But now he's back on the team and doing awesome things per usual. And having the team grow a bit is it's a really cool thing. As long as we can maintain the focus on improving the game and making Planetside 2 what, you know, what it really should be, kind of realize its potential, and I'm pretty confident that our current team setup will let us do just that. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and I'd like to hear what you're most looking forward to hitting live. And you can do that in the comment section down below. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.